Hello YouTube's Krosama, and here we have today from the Cross Silhouette line is the Freedom Gundam. Now this, man this is a beautiful, beautiful Cross Silhouette kit. Um, I would probably say this is, I'm just going to say it's my second favorite. Uh, I still haven't found one of the Cross Silhouette kits uh, that is beating the Zeta. Zeta is just so beautiful and I, I just love it. It's very much superb. Uh, but this one on the other hand is very much a good second place contestant. Um, just for the fact that it's very beautiful. The articulation is amazing. Uh, the wings are fantastic and it does have a lot of great weaponry uh, that it can utilize. And I, I can only assume maybe once I paint this kit, uh, I think only then will I really probably bump it up a little bit higher than the Zeta uh, or maybe on equal platforms but for the time being this is definitely my second favorite cross silhouette kit and I really was not expecting that I was really expecting this to be like my least favorite but you know what the Freedom is not a bad design whatsoever so maybe I'll just kind of be a little, little too picky but regardless let's go ahead and take a look at this kit and we're gonna start off with the SD mode and here we have the SD mode so uh, I'm not a fan of this to be honest like I, I kind of like the Zeta in the SD mode uh, the Nightingale doesn't really have much of a difference So I, I kind of like that one as well uh, But for the freedom man, it does not I don't, I don't know just to me It doesn't look good. Uh, I think it's just the proportions on this one in particular just and it does not resonate with me so ultimately I'm probably gonna keep on the uh, cross silhouette mode because I just really like it but yeah let's go ahead and take a look at the details and articulation or I guess lack thereof so we're taking a look at the head the head is going to have some amazing amazing little details all inside there not only did put the one sticker for the eye uh, but you are gonna have some other little stickers right up there uh, that you can utilize but I just decided to you know keep with the eyes and then everything else I will paint whenever I get around to painting the entire kit. For articulation is going to be on this kind of like a little hinge down here and it's going to have a little ball joint so yeah pretty much be able to move all the way around that's kind of trippy. <laughs> uh, but yeah the, other than that there's really not much else to say about the head doesn't really have any other uh, type of gimmicks except for the rotation of the eyes whenever you put it into cross silhouette mode. And moving down to the body the uh, only kind of sticker that you're really going to have is going to be the red one right there on the front of the chest uh, but yeah the body is pretty much overall really nice you got the vents down there which you know definitely has some uh, little details uh, then you have the chest Vulcans which look good so a lot of these things I'm just I want to paint super super bad I'm ready to go ahead and paint this kit but uh, I can't neglect everything else of uh, my projects that I really need to work on but regardless the uh, the navy blue is really good the the, the regular blue is fine um, yeah, overall it's it's a nice little piece and it is going to have a tiny bit of rotation uh, down here and that's pretty much all most of the uh, articulation you're going to be getting with that body part. And now we're looking at the arm. The arm is just going to be one solid inner frame piece uh, that is connected to the ball joint uh, right inside there. So yeah, not really too exciting. Uh, I never, I just can't get into it. It's just too much limited articulation uh, for my taste. But you are going to have the ball joint right there, and then the ball joint on the inside of the shoulder, and then the hand is also going to be on a little ball joint, so that can move all the way around. Uh, but you know, it can get a little bit of movement uh, right there on the shoulder. Uh, but there is going to be no bend at the elbow because there is no elbow. But yeah, that's about it for the arms. And for the waist, you are going to have some nice details on the front skirt right there. Uh, so definitely panel lining or if you want to kind of just mask it and then paint different tone colors. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing is like I'm going to paint uh, this little front piece uh, different colors as well as these little parts. Uh, just to kind of give it more of a, a dimensional kind of look. Uh, the side skirts, obviously these are going to be on like little ball joints uh, which will you know, pretty much have the rails. And the beam savers are permanently mounted uh, into this little piece. So unfortunately, you, you can't just take this off and it, it can become the beam saver as much as I would have liked that. Uh, but you know, it's gonna be kind of weird. I would maybe say if you are gonna permanently pose it uh, with the beam savers, then cut it off. Or if you want to uh, just cut these off and then utilize the other beam saber to mount inside there, uh, definitely go ahead and do so. And now looking at the little toesies. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be one little inner frame piece, so there's not gonna be hardly inner, uh, hardly any uh, actual articulation going on with this. It is gonna be on a little ball joint uh, right inside there, as you can see. So 
Yeah, not too much going on, unfortunately, but you are gonna get that little rotation right there, uh, rotation at the foot, and the uh, ankle skirt can actually rotate because it's gonna be on a little ball joint as well. But other than that, the details are pretty fair. Uh, you are gonna have a little seam line right there in the middle of the leg, so if you really are annoyed by seam lines, you're gonna have to remove that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. The feet, you know, the feet, uh, this whole thing is one little piece. So they're not going to have much of uh, any kind of, you know, little um, seam lines right there. And lastly, we're taking a look at the backpack. So you are going to have this little piece right here so that can rotate. This can rotate in and out. And then all these little wing parts uh, basically can move. So this is going to be connected. Uh, this is not going to be able to move, but you are going to have this piece that can move up and down. And then this one right here so you could definitely get some wide wing spread movement and that's gonna look pretty good but uh, obviously you're gonna want to hide the uh, the beam cannon on the shoulder so or in the backpack but yeah hide that and yeah you can get some pretty good articulation and movement another level of detail all inside of these is pretty nice so you're gonna have a lot of different panel lines going inside here uh, so painting is going to be fantastic and then just a little uh, beam cannon right there is going to have some great details as well um, I'm gonna show you out a little bit later whenever I do get into the weapons and the backpack is not really gonna look too nice with that giant seam line right in the middle uh, so you are gonna have to get rid of that if you do not want it uh, but the back skirt looks pretty good uh, overall some pretty nice details and here it is in the cross silhouette mode. So let's take a look at all the little details and just what makes the difference of the SD versus the cross silhouette. So the only thing that would change the head is essentially the eyes right here will switch out from the little cartoony ones to this more kind of streamlined look. But yeah, ultimately that's the only change when it comes to the head. So with the body, you are gonna be able to utilize the cross to the wet body inner frame. Now, the only big difference with this at, that I noticed, to be honest, is that it allows you to utilize these, um, pretty much this peg, like shoulder gimmick. Uh, so you can have a little bit wider range of movement and you can kind of push it in or you can pull it out quite a bit and just have a large range of movement, uh, which is definitely gonna be beneficial for you when you're in the cross to the wet mode. Now the change with the arm is essentially going to be two different parts, uh, well actually three including the little shoulder piece, but um, ultimately you will be able to have that little bend right here so there is going to be quite a bit of articulation uh, close to 90 degrees which is just going to be completely fantastic when it comes to the SD lines because you know as you know most of the old SDs do not have that little articulation bend uh, so that's just uh, perfection. And with the waist and torso, you're not gonna have a large range of movement if you just kinda like, you know, do it by the numbers. But if you kinda like move it around a little bit and pop it out, you can definitely get a wider bend and a, almost like a little bit of an ab crunch. Uh, but you're kinda pulling the little peg piece out just a little bit and it's gonna make the back just a little bit too heavy. So yeah, it's just really gonna be pulling it down. And then this part is going to be different. So now you can have these little pegs out right here. So it's going to allow the legs to just plug right into the waist. And you're also gonna have the inner frame for the leg right here to utilize. It's gonna give it such a wide range of movement, like beautiful, pretty much like a 90 degree angle right there, uh, maybe more like 85. Uh, but man, I just, that's why I like this line is because you are gonna get that extra amount of articulation with these kits and just aerial poses or even ground poses is just gonna be that much better. And for some comparisons, here it is next to the cross silhouette Zeta Gundam and the high gray base Gundam. Now when it comes to weapons, you are gonna have the beam sabers right here, and of course they're gonna be just, you know, colored all in white, so you will have to pop out the paints if you do want that little beam effect in there. Uh, but lucky you, you're not gonna really have to paint the hilt if you're just kinda of more of a straight builder. Uh, but I do believe painting the little beam effect parts is something that's gonna be very beneficial, and it's just gonna give this kit a little bit more pop, and essentially, you know, you don't get any stickers uh, for them. So even if you did get stickers, they'd probably be really terrible. Uh, so use this opportunity to go ahead and start painting. And as an added feature, you can combine both of these beam sabers to create the dual beam saber. So really awesome. And I, I actually prefer this than just kind of like keeping them separate. You could definitely pull off some amazing poses with these. 
And next we're gonna take a look at is going to be the beam rifle. So this is gonna be molded in both white and gray parts. Uh, no stickers, so you are gonna have to do a little bit of painting if you want that scope to be green and any other kind of you know added little details in there. But ultimately, it is a very nicely detailed uh, beam rifle, much, much, much better uh, than what I've seen with you know the Nightingale. I really didn't like that weapon. Uh, and the Zeta is, is kind of okay, but this one is definitely, definitely much better uh, than all those. And if you want, you can store it directly on the back skirt. And we're taking a look at the shield. It is going to be molded in both white and gray, much like the rifle. Uh, and this one is super detailed as well. Very nice. And just the aesthetic is great. The proportion is just perfect with the overall kit. Now it is going to have two stickers that are required for it. That being number eight and number seven, which will go right here and on the corner. So yeah, if you really are wanting to use the stickers, they don't look too bad. Maybe number eight is gonna be a little bit horrible, uh, but ultimately number seven, that should go just right nice in that little corner pocket up there. And it's also gonna be on a peg, so you can have a little bit of maneuvering with it. So if you wanna kind of adjust it, you can definitely do so. Now we're taking a look at the rail guns. Uh, it's just gonna have a little bit of maneuverability. So all you're gonna do is take this and you're gonna kind of just rotate both of these parts out and bam you now have the railgun deployed and here are the railguns deployed so ultimately they are looking super super good uh i do kind of wish that they had handles but you know you can really just scratch build handles on your own or if you really want you know just kind of just imitate it like I'm doing just put the hands uh, directly next to them and it's going to look perfectly fine uh, but yeah I, I just really love them you know the gimmick that they can actually fold out is you know just actually blew my mind I really was not really gonna expect that before I saw the promotional pictures uh, but yeah it looks really good so I, I'm very much excited to move on to the cannons on the backpack so with the beam cannons, all you're gonna do is just rotate these out. They do require you to take the head off, but you know what, we can kind of maneuver it uh, to where the head is still gonna be on. And I, I mean, you can get this up a little bit. So yeah, uh, just this part is gonna have to stay down. Uh, but over the, over the shoulder is not gonna be too difficult. And yeah, that's pretty much how you're gonna be able to do it. And with both of the cannons deployed, you can see the nice little details inside there. Uh, so with the lining, I would probably recommend you just go with red or, you know, whatever color you really want to go with. Uh, you can go with like navy blue or something. Something that's going to make it pop and not just all that plain white. Uh, maybe some green on the edges where those like three little, I would say charge uh, indicators are. That's what I would assume they are. Uh, but yeah, you have a lot of different opportunities to paint some hand painting in there. Uh, if you want to airbrush, that's cool too. But I would probably take this more of an opportunity for hand painting all, all these little fine details. But yeah, just having it not just all completely white is going to make it look so much better. But let's move on to the full burst mode. And here is the full burst mode. So yeah, this is quite beam spamming if I do say so myself. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's kind of the key feature of this and it's going to look super amazing even in SD mode. Much like it did in the high grade or the real grade or the master grade. All of the grades, it just looks super good. And I would probably say this is going to be maybe the pose I put on my shelf whenever I finally uh, get around to painting it. Uh, but it could be any one of the poses. You know, I, I really love all of them and I might just interchange them like I do most of my kits. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about it, guys. So let me know what you all think. I mean, me personally, this is, you know, once again, the second, my second favorite cross silhouette kit to date. And I probably will say it's gonna keep going down in, uh, in my little personal ranking for the SDs. Uh, just because there's a lot of great stuff coming out, you know, I, I really love uh, the Mazinger stuff. I probably wouldn't put them above this, uh, but I, I see a lot of the new ones and the, the getters and I'm just like, you know what? Those are probably gonna be surpassing this one very soon. But yeah, ultimately guys, I love this kit. I definitely recommend it, especially for the cheap price. Uh, if you can get the cross silhouette frame, get that, put it on there, uh, you know, paint it. I would, I would really recommend you painting it, guys. And if you have built this, please let me know in the comments uh, section below. And if you want, you can go to my Facebook and share some pictures with me. But that's it for me, guys. I'll be seeing y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.